Hey Legionnaires and welcome back, we're here in 1212 AD once again and today we have another historical battle for you today. Today we have the Battle of Kutna Hora, fought in uh, 1421, not 1221, 1421 uh, AD of course, no, not in BC, that will be a bit strange, but yes, bet between the Kingdom of, uh, well, more than just the Kingdom of Hungary. Between the Kingdom of Hungary, the Holy Roman Empire, uh, Austria, and well, various other nations were there as well against the Hussite coalition. This is one of the most famous battles from the Hussite Wars, fourteen. Uh, well, fought throughout uh, most of like the 15th century, really. Uh, it's all like a war over religion in sort of Central Europe, and uh, the Hussites did in fact win this battle uh, at Kutnahora. I mean, it says that uh, like if you like Google about Kutnahora. Anywhere between 50 to 90,000, uh, like, sort of Catholics against about 12 to 18,000 Hussites, which is an insane, like, different, like, sort of size and numbers. And, uh, yeah, I'm excited to see how this one goes down. Obviously, the Hussites are famed for their war wagons. So, this is uh, kind of like what they, uh, the, uh, the war wagons that we have in 1212, they are very much going to be in use today. And, uh, yeah, they often formed, uh, like, sort of defenses. The Hussites are uh, called like, I think like Wagensburg or something like that, like they were called like uh, something like that. I can't remember the exact term. And uh, basically just form like circles of like wagons uh, or like just formations with wagons set up. And uh, they're actually quite mobile apparently. It's a shame that they're not really in uh, in 1212, but they're, they're stationary. But apparently like they, uh, the um, war wagons, like they mounted eventually up on them with their like, uh, the gunners mounted up on them and they actually drove them through. Um, and like started obviously firing from them, a bit like mobile warfare, it's a bit like a drive-by, a medieval drive-by is what it sounds like, it's under kind of cool. So anyway, yes, on the uh, Discord we decided we would do some Hussite Wars, and uh, try and recreate a uh, famous battle, so we're doing Cut Horror, and it'll be interesting to see how it goes down. So yes, if you want to get involved in any 1212 AD battles yourself, feel free to join the Discord, the link is down below in the description of the video, as always. And yeah, it's, I'm excited to see how this one goes, that is for sure. Uh, if you are enjoying the 1212 content, feel free to leave a like, subscribe, uh, I don't know, hit that notification bell, everything to support the channel as we work towards 8k subs. Or 9k, sorry, we're already at 8k. <laughs> but yes, uh, we do have a lot of different uh, nations here already, and you can tell that I am clearly delirious today, it seems. Um, but we have, uh, we have Lorraine, we have, uh, we have the HRE. We have Hungary, and I think we have all the way over there Trier as well. So we have uh, Trier and Lorraine are kind of representing some of like the minor sort of like German states that were involved in this uh, Catholic League as well. I think there's like the uh, there's like Silesia, there's like uh, Moravia, and all sorts of like small irrelevant sort of like uh, nations. I guess, and there's other like Bohe and there's Bohemians on both sides of this one. Um, so I guess we could have had the Kingdom Bohemia on both like the Catholic and also the. Um, Protestant side, but that would have been a bit confusing, I guess. Do a Bohemia, uh, three Bohemian armies defending, and then we also have a uh, a Polish army somewhere, if I can find their troops. Oh, there's some Poles here, I think, these Polish gunners, yeah, Pavis hand gunners. So, yeah, they're uh, in use because they're sort of rep representing like the um, like the Pragas, the Taborites, the uh, Orobites, like just like these unknown sort of like, well, not un unknown to me, uh, but like just small minorities. Uh, in like the Hussite army, so uh, yeah, they're representing and also provide some decent cavs. So we've got Myrna Arms, Hussars, uh, I think we've got the Great Baron of Krakow here as well. Don't really know why we have this chap here, I mean he's, you know, I feel like he only comes out when uh, Poland's at war. Don't think uh, he'd be here representing the uh, Hussites, but you know what, he's here anyway. But yes, as you can see, it's already looking pretty nice. We've got a uh, nice defense going on here. These uh, war wagons are pretty difficult to destroy, so they almost act as a wall. So you've got to go through these choke points where the spears are defending and pole arms. Or, and I feel like we've got a, a few other small, like, um, some other cool units as well. Shock infantry, these are actually a Hussite unit here. Um, they actually are, like, just literally, like, peasants. They were, like, pitchforks or, like, spiky, like, I don't know. I don't really know how to describe them. Like, how would you describe that weapon there? It's like a mace, but on a long stick. Very strange. We there, there are like women in the unit. It's kind of a cool unit, um, but they are the actual Hussite units. They're very, very cool. And we have actually got the uh, commander here as well that was at the battle, and his name is Jan Siska. He is here. I'll see if I can. There is Jan. 
He's got a unique model. It looks awesome. Look at him. He's got. A, I don't know how he lost his eye, but he did apparently. Yeah, we've got Yan here. We've got to keep him alive to keep the uh, plus like sort of support going on. Oh, need to be careful. Mortar is firing. I think we realise uh, later. Oh my gosh. Be careful of Yan. <laughs> this mortar here going off. But yes, this was a, a pretty fun scenario. It was. It was, uh, so, and it's very different to a normal 12-12 uh, sort of battle. It's kind of almost a siege, really, as the uh, as the Catholic nations are trying to take out this sort of defense that there is. I'd say the weakest point is probably in the back. I think there's less wagons here. There are a lot of pikes and pole arms, though. Um, yeah, a lot of levy pikemen here, supported by spears. And there's more, like, pole arms here. But you could just shoot them. That's the thing, they are in these choke points. You could just shoot these units. They're, they have got things like gunners, which could definitely do that. And they've got artillery as well. There's, uh, there's uh, Lorraine. They have bombards. They could equally just shoot these uh, defenses and try and just unpick them like that. But the battle has already begun, it seems. Looks like some like, light pole arms here, like militia pole arms for Bohemia. Fighting against the pikes. They are outranged. I think these guys... Yeah, these guys also have, like... You can kind of really easily tell. Not the best lighting, I wouldn't lie for this one. Yeah, the pikes here, look at that. Those spikes. I don't know if it's an effective pike weapon, really. Gunners behind, I think, trying to get some shots off. And yeah, the artillery's still firing. I think it's trying to take out these bombards here. I don't know if they're going to even successfully take any out. Yeah, they are pretty hard to do. Artillery to artillery shots are pretty difficult. Uh, certainly more, more difficult when it comes to bombards. Spears here, and shocking through there, fighting away. The top is Ridge. Got the women of the Hussites in there already as well, fighting alongside their men. Everyone's here for the Hussite cause. But yeah, it's a really cool sort of like, um, it's an interesting conflict. Not one I know a lot about, to be honest, the Hussite Wars. Um, I mean, it's really over sort of religion. Um, Hus like, Hussite is like sort of a, it's not really a, I'd say, a, it's not really Protestant at all. But I guess it's like sort of the precursor to it, like the wars between the Hussites and the Catholics. It's like a precursor to like the wars between Protestants and Catholics in Germany. And uh, and yeah, it's uh, basically yeah, just between the Pope and usually the Holy Emperors. He saw himself as like the defender of the faith. And we've got a lot of cab moving here. This cab actually been pretty beaten up. You see artillery there. Um, artillery looks like it's been doing its damage to it. And yeah, these uh, light cab here, I guess. I don't know what they were going for, actually. Do not know. But we've got Cav over here, actually. Managed to get around the back, and it's rear charged a lot of these militia spears here and breaking these halberd militia. But yeah, it's, it's very, very nice. We've done the Hussites getting an early victory there. Very good to see. And the artillery still firing off. More just trying to just, you know, hit things back here. Hit the Elector Sarantan. Elector Guard as well. Shocking Madrid trying to do exactly what I would try to be doing. Doing, and that is trying to battle their way through these uh, these war wagons, actually trying to destroy them. It is possible you can do it this way. Also, a good move over here, just swarming these militia pikes. They're probably some of the weakest to break through. Artillery here is now trying to focus down these uh, mobs of German infantry as they come forward. Yeah, I don't really know like if, if like being a Hussite is like its own form of Protestantism or it's like I don't really know the ins and outs of uh, the Hussite faith, but it's very different to Catholic faith. I can tell you that. And uh, yeah, you can see there that the uh, pole arms are starting to lose so much so that another halberd is coming up. It's just the pikes. I think they're outranging them when it comes to uh, a pike fight. Uh, the shock infantry over here is losing. They are only light shock, so after a while they still have to die. But they are beating the militia spear back. Good to see. Fight on! Fight on! Problem is for Hungary that their roster, they had a lot of cav here. They had a lot of like humans uh, and sort of like light cav over here. And it's all patiently waiting uh, just to, to go in for something. And um, they're waiting, I guess, for a, a gap to open up, which slowly but surely it should do. And um, they have, what else have they got? Vlastella. Hungarian Knights, they've got some pretty good units. Actually, the Hungarian Knights are one of my favorite looking knights. They have black armor. Like, look at that. Who's the one black armor? 
But yeah, so they are just waiting patiently as like the uh, Hussites send more reserves to other areas and then they could try and break through somewhere where um, they just can't get reserves in it quickly enough. That is probably going to be their aim. You can see here, Cav is actually, Imperial Ritter shouldn't really be charging the pole arms, but it has assisted in breaking through here. We now have, what is the shock infantry? Oh, it's just a heavy shock infantry. I thought it was going to be another Hussite one, but no, the heavy shock. And yeah, I think most of the units are all tier 3 because we are in the 15th century. And then tier 3 is 15th century. But yeah, the cavalry is trying to break through. The shock infantry should win that fight. It's like prolonged melee. They are trying to shoot with their artillery as well into this blob. Probably not a good idea. The Imperial Ritter is probably more at risk, to be honest, than the, uh, than the shock infantry. There is more shock infantry back here as well, patiently waiting. And having no success are the uh, are the Catholics so far in breaking through. Let me know who you're rooting for. Are you rooting for the Hussites or are you rooting for the Catholic Church? Are you rooting for that Catholic League? Do you want them to break through? They start, start their assault over on this side as well, it looks like. Uh, this is all Trier going in. Just absolutely massing in. A lot of blobbing going on in this one um, for the Catholics. We'll just make our like mortar like fire much more effective. And also uh, our artillery as well. Blobbing just when so the opponent has artillery, not a good idea. So us as the Hussites, we were trying not to. Trying to spread out all of our forces. Uh, they kept shooting Yan, who luckily is still alive. But he did get keeping keeping shot by uh, the artillery, which was very rude. Very ungentlemanly shooting the enemy's general. Look at this. Militia spears wavering at 128 men. I think that's to do with gunners and other stuff. They are trying to pull through now. Don't do that. The spears against spears. Not exactly the most exciting fight, but it should be in favor of the uh, Hussites. I think they have very heavy, or heavy, sorry, uh, just light. And we got the uh, Imperial Pikemen here, the Landschnecht coming forward. There are some very good pike units here, Landschnecht uh, being one of them. Like the Holy Roman Empire has some good units, like the Doppelschotner Lang Langpieser. I'm probably butchering these names. They're also good. Not as uh, certainly better than those Shiltron militia that uh, Lorraine keeps sending forward. But yeah, look at this. Lorraine's found a gap. He's got his Samuel de Man in. And he's got not one, not two, but three units of them in. And he's going to get them, well, once the sergeant sword. But yeah, he's going to get three units of swords in. And he's found found a gap that's now going to be able to be exploited against the Hussites. The Hussites could be sending in their, like, I don't know, their women and children shock infantry, but we like to call them. Yeah, the Salderman, I, I don't know, they might win this fight. They are only light shock. If they don't get a great charge off, they often do die. Uh, another unit of uh, he heavy shock infantry is coming in. They might have a bit more success. Looks like they're going to try and get a rear charge as well into the Salderman as they come in. Keep hacking away with those axes, boys. Defend the Hussite faith. We have got uh, crossbows here as well that are being uh, caught in combat. They are losing. And we've got a Cav Assault on this back line here. This is not looking good for the Hussites, funnily enough. Are these, oh, they're light shot Cav, that'd be why. They are actually Hussite Cavalry. Uh, they're, what are they called, Hussetic here? I'm not even gonna try and pronounce the rest of that. Yeah, the Knights here are trying to break through for Hungary. I feel like they must be getting engaged with the pole arms with the spears here. Yeah, the spears engaged. They, they all turn the fight around. And here we go, a charge into the side of the spears by light cav. If there's anything like heavier than these jiggets, then they might actually work. There's also pole arms supporting, so it's just death for the cav. They are going to lose. Yeah, look at that. Already losing like 10 or so cavalry, if not more. But there is not much left for the uh, for the Hussites defending. They're sending forward their last few pikes. They're actually withdrawing units from other areas, weakening some of their defenses to send them to areas where they're being stretched and strained. If Trier could just was able to send some units out of this combat here and into uh, the spears here, he might have had some luck, he might have had some joy. There's actually Cav in the back lines here. Look at this. King's Bodyguard of Hunger actually managing to take out some German men-at-arms. I think they were sent around the back to maybe go for some rear charges. 
Uh, we also have spears that have been isolated all the way out here. I think this is a uh, like giving an attack order and they just chased the unit that they'd routed. These guys have been baited out, I guess. An easy way to get a spear kill. But uh, yeah, the uh, archers actually assisted in killing the militia spears. And these spears should get home safely to their families. And back to fight more for the Hussite cause. Definitely not looking good here. The pike's still breaking through. I'm literally sending in a uh, culverine crew, which has also earned a lot of chevrons. But I'm actually sending in artillery crew to fight to try and hold back the pikes. While we wait for an actual unit to come up. There are pole arms on their way. These levy bulk, yeah, but they're not going to do much either. They're probably just going to get impaled on the pikes here. As the uh, Empire's pikes just carry on marching forward. Yeah, they are seeing shock infantry break and, and cav, which is a shame. But the pikes, these Landschneck, they're doing well. And like I said over here as well, the uh, the Lang PS are also doing quite well. Beating back its, uh, its pole armor opponent. Uh, what are they, very heavy? No, just heavy. They're good. They're a prime target if you ever see them to kill. Shoot them down because they are nasty, nasty pikes. I think the HRE has some of the best pikes probably in the game. What uh, was this? Hector Man, this medium pike. Yeah. I mean, the Saddle Man here, you can see they got routed. So they are slowly pushing units back. Lorraine is kind of being forced back. Lorraine had a really like tough fight. Like it was back and forth, back and forth. It looked like they're fighting each other here, but yeah, here they go. Slowly fighting each other, also trying to fight each other. They are seeing a lot of wavering troops though as well. The gunners are doing a lot of damage to morale. Most of the wagons, by the way, are all out of ammo. They all fired their shots off pretty quickly. Uh, we do have a second line and a second smaller circle of wagons uh, that doesn't look like it's going to have to be used as the uh, mortars inside protecting itself. Yan is still getting shot at. I st couldn't stand this. I was like, my gosh, this guy just... Just a magnet for artillery shots. What do we have here? We have uh, two cav units going out. We have a heavy shot cav and a, uh, and a general here. And they're going to go out. I mean, they could go for rear charges here onto, uh, onto Trier, who looks like he's sending his crossbows now as well. He's looking desperate for sending those in. I mean, really, he should have those crossbows set up. And he could have probably tried to just bombard a, uh, at a choke point. Our men flee the field of battle. This is a shameful display. Enemy units have rallied and returned to the battle. Yeah, it looks like the uh, general as well over here is actually trying to break through. This is the general for Hungary. He's nearly broken through the spear line. A good charge actually from the general here. The prize he broke through. Maybe the spears were out of position or just weak. You know, they've been in the fight for a long time. And he's just smashing his way through it. But he is now losing. We have crossbows going into combat trying to hold him back. And there he goes. I think that's the king of Hungary dead. And that will probably be his whatever is left of his army about to rout as well. I don't know if he's got much left, Hungary. Trier's also not looking good starting to route here. We've got gunners as well going out the walls. It looks like they're going to try and uh, flank around, maybe shoot units in the back. Here we go. We've got German men at arms, healthy cav units, and the Great Banner of Krakow. They're also going into combat. And yeah, they're going to get a lot of rear charges. Already, the uh, Electra of Trier is routing before the cavs got there. They know what fate awaits them. Charge, men of the Hussites. Well, I guess he's a men of Poland, really, but... The other Hussites. That's all they are. I think Poland or Lithuania certainly did support um, the Hussites at one point. In the, a few of the other battles, they did in fact support them. They all, and I'm pretty sure they also, some of them support the, uh, the Catholics. Poland might have supported the Catholics, Lithuania, or the Hussites. I can't remember. But something like that. Look at this. They're all breaking. There's a mass out there from the tree air. And this flank's kind of all, like, sort of mopped up. Actually, this gun didn't use all its ammo. That was surprising. That's on the front lines. Um, but, yeah, most of the most of that flank is now dealt with. It's now really the HRE on this side. Has a chance to try and break through a balance of power. At this point, it is way out of their favor. I mean, I don't know what the numbers are now. 5,200 against 2,200. Yeah, there is no way they're going to turn that around. Both sides side with about uh, 8,000 men, though. So it's a 16,000-man battle. Big battle, but uh, yeah, the uh, Hussites seems with those defenses just second to none. No one's breaking through there.
respect to uh, Lorraine, though, he did not give up on trying to break through. It's a good, good uh, fight over on this side here. Looks like the general now is helping to rout this into the gunners. Got crossbows over here that are also in fight, in a fight they might break. I think, again, that must have been a micro issue by me. I just sent them out to, uh, and they got themselves uh, killed. They are fighting the Duke's foot bodyguard here. And we also have pikes in there. They need to be careful. There's that cab. This is the general here. To be careful they don't get him killed. I do love like sort of this like late medieval period where like pikes and cav are just kind of dominate the battlefield. Pikes, cav, gunners. It's kind of cool in its own way. It shows the evolution of like sort of medieval combat. Yeah, the pikes here still doing well, you know. Pikes like the guild halberds. Uh, I think that's what they call it, aren't they? Oh no, these are the Swiss pikes. Ah. They're medium pikes. I was thinking oh, it's guild halberds. So that makes more sense. I was like, oh, they will be a halberd unit. The They're getting hand. smashed to pieces by artillery. Uh, like the mortars are just obliterating these pikes. Poor pikes. Uh, our wavering our own troops, it does affect us, but I guess we're just holding on ever so slightly. Yeah, they've been shot in the back of these. Uh, by the gunners there, but they're rallying. The Swiss pikes won't give up. Or I say that as they retreat. Cowards. Cowards, a lot of them. Got a bit of a rear charge there from the uh, from the cav. Or at least it looks like it was one that the Lancaster has turned around. They're now facing off against the cav. That threatens their rear. But they're surrounded on all sides. The Lancaster, I think, are going to die here. There you go. That's them dealt with. Now we're seeing a rear charge. This will be one of the last sort of decisive charges. Got the uh, like the Margrave of Moravia here. He's supposed to be fighting for the Catholics, but today he's fighting for the Bohemians. I guess it's just a unique a general that they used. There you go. That is most of the uh, Catholics all dead. So it does seem as though Kutnahora is going to go the way of. The Hussites, once again, a decisive, well, I wouldn't say decisive, but a close victory. They lost about half their number, did the Hussites. Uh, it would have been tough for the Catholics. I mean, there was another line of wagons still to go with, our, uh, with uh, ammo. And uh, I imagine that the Hussites, if there was any threat of the outer sort of layer breaking, they would have retreated to this inner layer. But uh, yeah, that is basically, I think we've just got to see some generals just getting run down. The Holy Roman Emperor is still over here. I don't know what he's doing out here. I think he was killing... Maybe some cav or something like that. I don't know. He just kept in reserve. He's just way, way, way back. He should have been at the front lines rallying his troops. Um, we also got some gunners that look like they might need uh, killing off. But we'll see. See what uh, happens here. If the general here just dies, I think that'll be enough for a mass route and the, uh, everything should break. But yeah, I hope you guys did enjoy this historical battle. It's certainly a little bit different to what we've done before. When it comes to historical land battles, usually it's just, you know, like uh, a clash of arms. And uh, usually maybe it's like a, maybe a flank or something like that, or like reinforcements. Uh, but yeah, this one kind of turns into a bit more of a uh, of a bit more of a siege in a sense with those wagons, and it kind of is how they do work. Uh, really, they often just become a wall themselves and just uh, and yeah, really kind of stump the stump the attackers. And they are really difficult to kill in 12-12. Whether they should make them uh, susceptible to artillery, um, I, that's what I'd recommend that the modders would do. But I don't know if they are working on so like on uh, balancing things like wagons. You could make a mobile in return uh, for, like, I don't know, weakening them. Uh, you could do that. But yeah, the Holy Roman Emperor there, his bodyguard has broken and is dead, and that should be a mass route. Uh, actually, these guys rallied. Okay, of course they did. Um, but yeah, I, it's certainly something that I never see wagons brought in custom games because usually they get banned. So when you try and use them in scenarios like this, they, uh, you do see the true power of them, and they are super strong. But yeah, there you go. A close victory for Bohemia. We'll end the replay and have a quick look at the end results. Uh, I was playing in this one, as I was uh, saying. It was part of the uh, Discord, so like organized scenarios that we do. Um, so yeah, I was playing in this one. So well done to uh, Aiki, to Thunder, and Bulk. All did a really good job on that defense. It was pretty good communication on our side. So we made sure that if anything looked like it was going to get broken through, we sent what reserves we could to there. But yeah, I, my spears are pretty well. 190 kills actually is pretty good for these spears. Uh, 205 kills with this pole arm. and still really healthy. 187 with the other one. 144 with another there. Crossbows. 
yeah, I kind of did just throw them into combat in the end because they didn't seem to be getting good uh, like angles. But yeah, 100 kills is about there. It's, like, it's decent, to be honest. Uh, my Culverines getting 163 kills. Uh, and then my Mortar getting 336 kills. My uh, yeah, wagons were never needed. I keep playing as uh, Poland, uh, kind of as those like, sort of like uh, unusual sort of uh, Hussites. Not like from uh, Prague necessarily, but like the Taborites and the uh, Orobites. Uh, I guess that's what they represent. But yeah, the uh, 254 kills with the German men at arms there. I think that's probably killing off Trier. 220 with his great banner at Krakow. 195 with the bombard. Very nicely done. I think most of his army was kept in reserve, which I didn't even realize we had this many reserves. Um, all of these guys were just like never attacked. There's some of these these spears, I think, just never saw action against Trier. Um, but then we have Thunder Nut playing as another Kingdom of Bohemia. His general getting 318 kills is very, very nice. 169 kills with his shock. 259 with another one there. And then his uh, like spears getting uh, 98 kills. His uh, pole arms under getting 199. Gunners getting 194, 227. Really good kills. Gunners are so good in 12-12. They really are. His cav, 125 kills with these like Hussite cav. And then his... Uh, is a like heavier cab here getting 156 kills. Um, he did actually have crossbow cab. I didn't show it, but they actually did like snipe out the artillery for the uh for the Catholics. But they then we have bulk playing as the final kingdom of Bohemia with all of the wagons really that were actually used. 157 kills, 105, 134, 150 kills. So they actually did pretty well. Um, for like a unit that doesn't have a, that many gunners, they are pretty damn effective. His actual gun is getting 205 kills. Um, his pole arms, 176 kills, and his uh, like light shock uh, that he had, uh, getting 142, 149. Then he has his uh, general getting 168 kills. Then we have Killer playing as Hungary, 196 kills with his king's bodyguard here. Very nice kills for them. Uh, then he had a lot of cab, which unfortunately he just could not use really. Um, so Bohemia he had a few spears and a few archers, and that was it. But yeah, the cab just didn't really get used to try to try and break through a few areas. A few of them getting into the 80s. But nothing exciting. I feel I just could have just changed this uh, roster. Um, because, yeah, when you see the the wagons, you know what's going to happen. A defensive formation will be formed up. Cav is not really going to be able to be in much effect. Then you have Jules playing as the Home and Empire. Uh, 137 kills with his land snacked here. 100 kills and 193 kills with all of his pikes. I mean, pretty damn good kills. They are his best. His Ritter, yeah, we just got focused down by myself. I just did a lot of damage to that. Uh, yeah, it was a rough game for him. Then we have Aesthetic Monkey playing as Lorraine. Again, another one that had a bit of a rough game. Back and forth, but got some pretty good kills, you know. Um, I mean, his uh, swords down here getting 119 kills. His gunners, 140. I realize how little missiles he actually had. He just had the one gunner and then the artillery, um, which did okay, 103 kills. But yeah, he really was just forced to just kind of charge at the pike lines and hope he was going to break through. Um, but yeah, as you can see, not much into the triple figures uh, for for Lorraine. And then we have Don Al Trump playing as uh, the Electorate of Trier, who actually organized this scenario. So thank you very much for here, uh, sorting it out. 96 kills uh, with his Elector Guard here. 92 with these uh, like mounted Elector Guards. I think these are the mounted ones. And then, yeah, his uh, rest of his infantry really struggled, I think, against the Bohemian lines. It wasn't uh, really like top tier, some of it. Like his shock was probably his creme de la creme. But there you go, guys. That is the Battle of Kutna Hora. I hope you did enjoy. If you did, do remember to leave a like, subscribe if you're around here, and I'll see you in the next one. Bye for now.